Uh, hi, <laughs> a lot of people have already joined. Uh, one second, still waiting. We would start at 11. Uh, hello. Hey. Hi, hi. Hare Krishna. Hi, Suraj. Technical hacker is also here. Rocco the Rooster. Rahul, uh, let me know if I'm audible or not. Is it? Uh, my my camera is this side, so I, the main screen is this side, so you might see a, a left side view of me. Let me know if I'm audible or not. Yep. Let me put it this way, it would be better. And I'm just setting it up everything. Uh, new comments. Technical hat, you want to write something. Uh, Manikesh, Tech Tube, Prabesh, Shaq, Adi Hacks, Harshal Chauhan, Krish, Techie Praveen, hey, hi, Transec, Sai Venkat, my. I see a lot of. Hi, Arpit. So, Arpit has been in the past few live streams as well. Hi, Moktik. Yeah, Moktik is my biggest fan. That's what he has written out. Audio is OP. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Manikesh. So probably I'm, everyone is able to hear me. Uh, let me just set set up everything. Uh, and then I would give the idea what what's today's context is and all about. Let me put it on Twitter as well. That okay, it's fine. I think we can start. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Thank you for joining in the stream. So the uh, the agenda or the how we would be proceeding today is first I'll be talking about H two C smuggling, and Rohit, who is the creator of Security Designs, has been very great, like has been very generous to offer us a slide view of that. So we would be looking at that. I'll be also uh, suggesting you a few resources where you can read on this. A few people have been asking me that H2C smuggling is um, like you should make a dedicated video on that. So that would also be coming very soon. So stay tuned on the channel for that. And who is the guest, Harikesh? So uh, Rohit is coming for the giveaways. And they obviously, he would, he would soon be coming on the channel as a guest. And he would be definitely teaching us something. So I have those in plan. So I have a few plans. So let's 
so first let me complete the agenda so yeah first there would be h2c smuggling then i would i would invite rohit to do the giveaways so then there are few conditions and such so we would be choosing some winners on the basis of that and then like towards the end of it i would be taking the questions that you have all asked so let me just put the link of the form if someone has forgot to ask the question you can ask it here even if you like if you have forgotten to submit it on the form you can still ask here but i would give like priority to the people who have already put it up in the form because they have put in some effort previously so this is the link of the um, form that you you can use to submit the questions for the live stream most of these are as i have already posted on twitter most of these are for related to um like uh, infosec jobs as a like as a fresher and that too like if you are doing bug bounty and such so most of the people are into that question like that question category also while i am at it let me just show you one thing uh i think i have already posted it on the google form as well but let me just put it here so so a few times like people have been asking like i am already helping people on twitter and such by dms and such and that would continue to be the same but there there have been times when people have been asking for like i've been taking mock interviews and like people have been asking for that so uh like this is a platform that i've recently joined let me just show this screen now uh, let me know while if you're able to see this or not so so this is a platform enginebogi.com and this is something that i've recently joined so you can book a session here and there are other experts as well so if you want like if you want to uh, learn about something software development and such you can even talk to these people so like where they are working and all those things you can talk to them so this is my profile here you can go to this and if you want a 40 minute session like a mentorship kind of thing anything related to security you can discuss be it ctf bug bounty cyber security career anything that you want you can discuss it here if you want a mock interview like the way we take interviews for our candidates or what are the usual questions that people ask like one of the questions that i would suggest people should know is that the journey of a packet so that's a very common question that a lot of startups and the journey of a packet i think that's the thing yeah this is the so this is a common question that a lot of a lot of companies ask and a lot of security engineer would ask you so a lot of these kinds of questions is something that i would be talking about here in mock interview it would be a whole one hour session and it would be divided into two parts so first like 30 minutes or 40 minutes i would be taking this interview session even if you like whatever questions that usually they ask and what questions are you expected to answer those are things then i would try to these would also include specific questions related to your resume so it won't be like a generic set of questions ki yaar those questions and that won't be there and then there is this re resume strengthening so a lot of people what they do is they just uh put a lot of non relevant or a bit irrelevant things into the what do you say into the resume on the top so like how to like how do you say put it up in a better way so that is something you would look in the later half of the mock interview session so if you want you can check this out as well it's totally uh, it's totally up to you i uh, these these things would still continue to be here so this is the link i just put it here if you have any questions around it i am i'm still available on all my like channels like on twitter on discord on telegram people usually ask questions there you can still ask questions but if you have you want to have a dedicated session this is where you need to go cool i think i can stop the screen sharing now let me continue with this uh this is this hi vivishan sir namaste so vivishan sir is my uh, teacher from uh, from my school while i was a very young kid so yeah uh, thank you sir uh, let me start with h2c smuggling so here it is uh, is this my screen visible can someone just comment it here uh, I think it should be, but I just want to make a confirmation before I proceed with this. Guys, is the screen visible? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let me hide this thing. Yeah. 
thank you sneha thank you pranav so yeah so h2c smuggling so yep thank you rohit uh, so this is a security sign that rohit makes uh, i will talk about it later after i have completed the h2c it's blur uh, the side part would be blur but the main con content would be there like it's how this is presented i don't i can i don't have any control over that okay so h2c smuggling stands for http request smuggling via clear text connection upgrade so i'd be talking don't get intimidated by the terms it's uh, like it's what you think it is like smuggling is something that you are sneaking away into that so that's what is going to happen i will show you that as well clear text is like usually the connections that you make that like currently if you are on the on youtube so youtube has https connection right so https connections are not clear text connections meaning to say those are encrypted connections so that any third person cannot sift the data or cannot see what you are sending so that's how websites protect your personal data so let's say if you are logging to a website if you are logging to facebook so you enter your email and password or your username and password so as you do that because that's an https connection so like your data is encrypted and any person who is on the same network maybe on the same wifi or maybe on the same lan network so they are not able to see your data or they are not able to see your username and password because it is an encrypted connection so clear text is when it's not an encrypted connection upgrade is something that i would talk about so let's continue with this first so as to see smuggling we we are looking into a very specific context related to bypass proxy controls as you can see this one here so very first question is and anything that i talk about i usually try to break it in what why and how so what is about like what is as to see smuggling so that is the first thing i would talk about so you would have seen like if if you if you are into web development or such or even if you are following the technology or technology related to these you would have seen that a lot of these websites they are move, moving from http 1.1 to http 2 because of a lot of inherent advantages and that is like if you go to google.com and if you see the traffic into any proxy or even if you open the network tab then even there you could see that it is mostly the responses contain http/2 into the first line and that's like that can help you understand that okay it's a http2 connection so you can read about this http/2 versus http/1.1 so the first question is what is h2c smuggling so internet is moving from http1.1 client can request with upgrade error. so what client can request is client can request an upgrade from http1.1 to http2 because a very few of these websites support it so right now the way it goes is the client has to request from http1.1 to http2 that's because uh, like by default every client right now it works on http1.1 but they can ask like hey please upgrade upgrade it to http2 so that they can like get the benefits of that and here's a beautiful diagram regarding that so here's the like browser the browser sends a request and adds a header upgrade h2c h2c is basically http2 clear text and then it goes to the proxy so proxy is not your bur proxy that we are talking about here proxy is basically nginx or apache server so like any website that you are running like let's say there is a website there's my website asimstra.in right so asimstra.in that runs behind a, a, a lot of edge servers or proxy servers and that is because proxy servers are basically a central gateway to the whole backend like there could be one one uh, what do you say one one server that could be hosting thousands of websites so to part, to route to the right traffic or right browser or right sorry right website what is done is there is a proxy server and on these thousand websites so these thousands of websites would be maybe hosted on different folders or maybe those would be hosted on di different virtual machines on the same server on the backend server so like if for an example you can see that uh, you use a data ocean droplet or maybe on aws you use ec2 instances so these are basically a virtual server so it's not that they have given an actual machine onto the server rather they have given you a particular resource onto that so they like there could be a machine which has 64 gb or 128 gb of ram and let's say it it has like 200 tb of storage right so what these companies do they, they partition those into smaller fragments so let's say if you are if you are taking a data ocean vps or virtual private server for let's say 1 gb of ram and 20 gb of disk 
So from that big machine, like 128 GB RAM and 200 TB of hard disk, they would allocate you 1 GB of RAM and 20 GB of hard disk for your purpose, for your usage. And they partition it that way. So proxy server, what they do is, because like there could be multiple machines or multiple different servers that would be running on the same machine, proxy servers act in the way that they, tra they direct traffic to the actual server that's required. So if if the same machine on the backend, like data version backend, the big, the huge machine that we are talking about. So let's say if host, if that machine host Google.com and it also host, uh, well, let's say it also host, like not not Google.com. So let's say it host asimstray.in and it also host uh, as api.asimstray.in. Let's say let's take that for an example. So this proxy server would actually redirect traffic to those different backend services on the basis of the host header that it finds. So that's the usage of proxy server. So the, let's come back to this. So there's this browser that sends a request to the proxy server and it adds a header upgrade H2C. So this request goes to the proxy and the proxy then forwards that particular request to the backend server. The backend server responds with HTTP 1.1 here and 101 is the status code. So 101 is, 101 is basically a status code where it says that I'm like switching protocols. So let me, uh, I don't know, one second, let me, let me just show what, what is 1.1. Yeah, I think that we can see this now. So 101 status code. So HTTP 101 switching protocols response code indicates that the protocol the server is switching to as requested by a client. So what happened here was, so here the client was requesting an upgrade to H2C. So by default, it was on HTTP 1.1. It requested an upgrade of protocol to HTTP2, and that's why it's getting a response of 101 status code. So again, response goes to proxy and proxy sends it back to the browser. After this whole process is done, the proxy understands that the pro protocol has to be upgraded and it creates a tunnel. So now this tunnel is basically a direct connection between the browser to the server. And that connection is, don't, un don't understand it that it's not going through proxy. It's still going through the proxy if the if the diagram has just been made so that you are easy to understand what's going on because as you can see it, it has been mentioned here that proxy no longer monitors this tunnel so what happens is if you send any traffic through this tunnel which actually goes through the proxy but the proxy has no control over it so proxy also what these proxy do it they they basically add any waf check or access control check so if like say a website is behind cloudflare so that cloudflare is as a proxy so you can easily understand that the proxy no longer monitors is now you're getting the idea that, okay, since it's not being monitored, so probably like there's no access control or there's no WAF check on that. So you're getting the idea what, what the issue could be here. Now let's talk about the H2C specification, what it says. So this is the get request that's going on. And let's say you do a get on foo, foo is an endpoint and the host is example.com and you add upgrade header H2C. Then in the upgrade header, you also need to add a few other headers like HTTP2 hyphen settings and the parameters and then connection upgrade comma HTTP2 hyphen settings. So let's let's get it, break this down one by one. So upgrade H2C, H2C is like upgrade only to clear text. And this upgrade header is the RFC specifies H2C should be upgraded to non TLS connection because so there, there are two things, there's H2 and H2C. So H2 is by default the TLS connection. TLS is basically HTTP, HTTPS connection, which is a which is an encrypted connection. And H2C is basically a clear text connection. So RFC specifies that H2C should be upgraded to non-TLS connection because the client has requested that it should be H2C and not H2. Now let's see this here. Uh, the HTTP2 settings, the parameter, what's the parameter values here? It's a base 64 encoded HTTP2 params. So there could be different kind of parameters there. And like that's a base 64 encoded string that goes into the request body. RFC also says, ignore these settings in H2C. So uh, like what happens is uh, this, this, uh, this HTTP2 settings. So 
that goes through the proxy and that's the only phase that it is being used and later on like it's it can be ignored by the later on servers that encounter it so like we saw in this previous page here that the request goes to proxy and then goes to the backend server so the proxy can act upon the this uh, settings http2 settings but later on the servers that come later on to that those can ignore these so that's what rfc says third is a risky opportunity so http connections are mostly single request http2 connections are persistent because the binary protocol communicates continuously so http2 connection basically is a dat connection and a log lift connection between the browser and the backend server so the response like the request goes on streaming and the response also or comes as a streaming so other similar kind of connection that you could see is our web socket connections for upgrade request proxy will stop handling individual request and rather creates a tunnel so that's what it does it creates it basically acts as an what is as an invisible proxy kind of thing it doesn't add any checks onto that it just straight away passes the traffic from the client to the server and it doesn't append it doesn't do any check maybe if it was doing a waf check or anything like that it won't be doing any that any of those further now what's the problem so see proxy could as it the proxy thing so it's handling routing waf and authentication so routing i talked about that let's say if there are multiple backend servers so it's routing that waf is as you already know cloudflare is also waf and it acts like a proxy between the actual website and like the the client so if you go to asimshare.in it also is behind cloudflare so uh, like like the traffic once you hit onto the traffic or if you do a dig asimshare.in you would get the cloudflare server so let me see if i can show you that uh asimshare.in zoom in a bit if you see these these are cloudflare's end end servers let me show you this that api access not allowed cloudflare id so if i do what do i say who is kind of thing so uh, i'll just do a search for this ip you would see that this is a cloudflare net ip you can you can do other ways you can find about this other ways as well cloudflare and the cloudflare net so that's because the ip that it get and my website get resolved to it is a cloudflare ip because my website is behind cloudflare proxy i have done that so that i can like get the benefit of the waf and no one can like no one needs to like no one does brute forcing or ddos kind of thing so that's why i have done that if that tunnel is created then above controls may be bypassed yeah that's the that's the main crux of all this attack that if there is a dat htc smuggling it can be straight away it can be bypassed all those checks can be bypassed and that's the issue with this htc smuggling so now we would see both the case scenarios one by one so what happens when there is a htc upgrade and like proxy without htc upgrade and with a htc upgrade so as to understand the actual attack scenario between these two so let's say there is this browser it's doing a get request on proxy proxy is uh, like get forwarding the request to the server for the server responds back with the whatever status code and data that's it's there now this let's say there is an internal endpoint get slash internal so this time the proxy does a check on that like what kind of endpoint is doing that so it's checking it's checking for the routing thing and it find that it's an internal endpoint which only the internal host should be able to access so that's why it's blocked that request but let's say if there's a h2c upgrade already there so what the attacker would do is they would do a get request and add this upgrade h2c header this would go to the backend request backend would respond with 101 like status code that would mean that would mean for the proxy that it's uh, like it's accepting the client's up, like switching protocol thing and that gets back to the browser then the proxy since the proxy is no longer monitoring the connection as it has switched the protocol and it has like directly created a tunnel between the client browser and the server now the attacker can get the internal endpoints and get the data from there so that's how this proxy is bypassed and that's what the whole smuggling attack is so basically you are smuggling an internal request that's why it's called h2c smuggling 
So this is the whole Zine or whole flyer right now. And you can get this on security Zines as well. I think I just opened it. So, yeah. so Rohit has made a beautiful website. You can see, so there's this upcoming thing, the Zines, which you can download and buy as well. So you can check these Zines. These are paid, but he has promised that he would be giving a few, uh, few of these as a giveaway today. So this is the one that I was talking about, this H2C smuggling. These are free. You can check these as well. There's HTTP request smuggling. There's server-side template injection, open ID, Kate's architecture, Docker and Docker, Redos, regular expression DOS. So all these things. And I think there is this presentation as well about cybersecurity career paths and attack defenses. So yeah, you can check it out. Now I would like to invite Rohit here so that he can do these kinds of, like he can go on with this uh, giveaway. Let me once invite him. It would be nice to hear from the horse's mouth itself so so that he could explain it better. Uh, Rohit has already joined. Let me add him to the stream. Everyone say hi to Rohit here. Hey, hi, Rohit. Hey, hi, I see you. How's it going, man? Yep, it's going good. Your signs are doing quite nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So so I, I, I was there in the presentation, man. So I really like it the way you explained. Uh, again, thank you so much for doing it. So, guys, as uh, Asim said, we have a giveaway planned for uh, today. So, the giveaway count that we are planning is 20, and we are planning to give a security zines bundle. Um, Asim will share the specifics of uh, how we are planning to go ahead with the giveaway, but uh, I would like to talk about uh, just a short thing about security zines. So, why I thought of writing security zines. So, uh, with the time, users' uh, attention span is going down. So we don't have that kind of attention span where we can read the entire blog of, let's say, a couple of pages. So that is really getting difficult and getting att user's attention is really getting difficult. So I thought of like creating something which can extract the blog in just one page or like in a couple of slides, that too with a lot of comics in it. So this was the whole idea behind security zines. And uh, then I thought of like writing zines so that it can help someone to recatch the same topic again. So this was the whole idea behind it, and uh, yeah, that's that's really uh, that's that has been a really nice journey to write security things. So yeah, yeah, that's that's all about it. Right, do you want to show any of the zines right now? If we have, like, I saw that there's an upcoming zine about burp burp suit, I think, and you were also talking about this on your Twitter as well. Uh, the burp hundred day or thirty day challenge, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but there was that. Yeah, so there was uh, a, a, a hashtag that I was promoting on Twitter, which was like Burp Hacks for Bounties. There are a couple of things around Burp which are not explained so well in the documentation of Burp Suite. So I thought of picking that up and uh, creating some sort of mini blocks or micro blocks on Twitter. It was like Burp Hacks for Bounties. So yeah, that was it. But this, the, the, the comic that I'm creating next is uh, like writing Burp Suite plugins, basically. So if you see, writing Burp Suite plugin is a really challenging thing if you're not from development background. So I was thinking of simplifying it in form of a comic. That is not a zine, but a comic, I would say. Oh. So yeah. So let me just show what uh, Ruth is talking about. I think this is the one, right? This upcoming Burp Suit. Is this the yes, one, right? Yes. Yes. Ah, yeah. So guys, let me add this link in the chat here as well. If you want, you can go to this. Then I'll just show what is the what are the specifics of ah, yeah. Cool. So yep. So yeah, uh, we have a set of rules so that we can also help choose winners because there's only 20 zines that Rohit has uh, kindly provided us, but I think that would be good enough to start. So yeah, these are the four conditions. So first, share the link of any zine that you would want with the reason why. And this should be done on Twitter. Tag three people. First is Rohit himself, tag me as well. And one person whom you think that this should be, like they, they, they would also love this. And then add these bound, these hashtag if you feel like. This would help to like create a chain of people and create a chain of 
think that okay other people would also get to know about jeans and the effort that rohit is putting into this subscribe to this channel and comment on this video your twitter and handle as well so that we can choose about it and tagging us we can help okay like these people are there so that we can later help to choose from those people okay these like these are the ones we would be contacting it so by the end of like this week like by friday or saturday rohit or i either of us would reach out to you telling out like whom ever you feel and whichever zine you have chosen one person would get only one zine that's obviously unsaid but yeah that's what we have planned right now so yeah let me just add this link for this as well here in the chat so that if anyone wants to read these later on so this is the link for the conditions and yeah zines are amazing thank you nancy thank you nancy uh yeah Roy, do, do you have anything else for us? No, man. That's all from my side. Thank you, Asim. Thank you again. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Roy, for joining in. Thank now. You. Okay, that was Roy. <laughs> yeah, Roy Krishna. That's only one. Maybe later on we would have more of these. <laughs> so yeah, let's come to the questions that I had uh, in this live stream. I'll be talking about these because. Oh, I see three more people have added in their questions. A few of these, I think, they have been taken in the previous sessions as well. Let me just try to add this to uh, share the screen now. If you have any more questions, you can also ask me right now as well. That's also fine. Uh, this is is this the good way, or should I go it individually? Like here, I can just scroll over all these questions and video requests that people have added. let's take it one by one that would be better i think so the first question is what is it yeah, so there are 35 responses and yeah what is it you want me to answer uh, the question was blue team jobs or red team jobs which have more scope in india salary wise okay yeah so let's take it in the, I, i would be also putting it here in the chat in the comment so that you can get to know later on as well. so So this is the first question: Blue team jobs or red teams of which have more scope in India salary wise? So uh, I, I don't think there is a very, very well defined that the, this is only a blue team job. Like if, like I as a security engineer, I work kind of the blue team work, but it's not that I only do a blue team job thing. I also do red teaming activity at Gojek where currently I'm working upon. But yeah. Red team jobs, which which are very specific companies. So if you if you are asking about ki hey Asim, do you want me to join? Should I join a company which is very specific to just security pen testing out of India, or do you want me to join as a security engineer or as a person where I can dabble into both of these? Like I can do blue team job work, I can also do red team job. I would definitely suggest to the latter one. The point being is that I have not seen. salary wise i have not seen that a lot of these security company which are based out of india they are paying they are paying a very high salary it's usually in the range of 5 to 6 lakhs and if you are lucky they might pay you by 7 or 8 whereas as a security engineer job uh, like if you go to startups or other places i have seen easily their people are paying over 12 lakhs per annum so that's something i have also talked about in my cyber security job series as well and yeah so that's obviously subjective to how you are performing and which company you are applying to but from my 3 years or 2 years experience and from my own applying to other companies and talking to a lot of people that's what i have concluded right now when i am currently not answering the chat question you can just put it in once the 37 37 responses are done i would just four oh, two more responses got added in i would take the questions in the chat uh can a beginner like me as little bug bounty so i have bug bounty questions i have taken a lot of times just i would just do it in a fast manner can a beginner like me who has little bug bounty experience get a job in security field see it's a vague question i would say people should ask a bit a bit better question because little bug bounty experience i don't know what what do you mean by little bug bounty experience i mean there are people who just like have very few months of experience but they have done quite good in as an impact So, if you mean that you have little impact in the bug bounty, you you haven't found a lot of uh, bug bounties and such, you can still get a job in cyber security field. But you need to prove yourself. Like you need to prove the recruiters why they should be willing to hire you. I will talk about it more. There are other questions as well. I talk about it in a more 
better format i think I, if i take the summary because there would be a, a lot of repeat questions so i think that would be taken in a club manner that would be easier like bug bounty is starting in terms of like all these i would just take it to one collage kind of thing uh github recon so the question is uh i think the question is about github recon like how to do github recon so i would i would do a, a dedicated video on that just like add this into the comment or ping me up i, I would add it to my let me I, let me just do that uh, let me just save it somewhere okay i have just saved it in my in my backlist of things so i would make a video on github recon that's what i think the person is asking bug bounty bug bounty itself is not a question please elaborate what you want and if you want to like ask about bug bounty and stuff there's a dedicated series on to my channel so if you go to youtube channel there's a bug bounty series itself you can go and check it out here uh what is that uh, why that? so there's the, this full playlist bug bounty and there's 16 videos and the end one is about automated scanner recon if you want any specific or if you want something specific to bug bounty, please ask about that. I would try to post like video onto that because this is something that that has been after a long time. I've not made any more videos. I've not added any more videos into this after May 14. So it's been around three months now. So if you want in specific video on a specific topic, please ask. I would try to do that there. I am currently in my final year. Let uh, me post it here. I'm currently in my final year of BTEC degree. I'm right now focusing on problem solving, data structure and algo for placements. That's good. What things should I prepare for my interview so that I can get job as a security engineer? So like one of the things that I talked about today was about um, the journey of a packet. So that is very specific question, but just to encompass all the things that you can talk. So yeah, you can, you, uh, you may be expected to apply to in the interview as a security engineer is that. First of all, not every company who is looking for a security engineer wants that you should be a very pro bug bounty hunter. If I talk about myself while I applied to Grofers, I didn't have a very lot of like bug bounties on my name. I had quite a few companies, but it wasn't that I, I like a lot of those were, went paid bug bounties and such, right? I had a knack of that. I had been into CTFs. That was a very good thing, but like that was that. So, a lot of these questions that they asked me was related to my work that I had done. So like I had this Python administration tool on my uh, GitHub thing. Let me just show you that. GitHub slash. So there's this Python rad that I made. Uh, yeah, this this has been certainly, uh, certainly wrapped as a Python administration tool, whether, whether it's a Python malware. So it has these features that it could do a two-way interaction without a public IP. Usually public IP is required. Can work on any free hosting there. A PHP script automatically create folder. It was persistent. It was able to send identification details like MAC address, locale, public IP, and all that. It had multi-thread implementation. So if anything that it looted from the system, it could send it back to the attacker. It also did key logging and any command that it received. So all these were on three different threads. So it was a technically good challenge at that time. I made it in my second year, I think. It would seal passwords from Google Chrome, automatically spread by USB. So I read about it and then created that. Send 75 hash of file, retry, screenshots, search, commands, all these features were there. So I had written this in my interview as well, and in my resume as well. So like most of the questions are related to my resume. And then something specific that was there was OWASP top 10. Because if you're applying as a security engineer, most, in most of the places you would have some website to pen test, or you would have some company which is working on running on a website or an Android app. So let's say if you're applying to a company which has only a mobile app, so you are, you are expected to do mobile app pen testing, you're expected to know mobile app pen testing. If you're applying to a company which is a cryptocurrency or blockchain company, so you are expected to have some blockchain security experience. You, you are expected to know about it. And how you would do that, you you would read about it. But reading is something that you would do. You would know, OK. But how would the interviewer know that you have experience on that? He, he won't be giving you a test and then testing you live. He would be looking at your resume and he would be seeing that, have you done anything related to blockchain security as such? And if you haven't done, then it would be a bit difficult for him to choose you over a candidate 
who has already some experience written on to that so you might ask ki hey same because i am a fresher how would i have experience so see experience doesn't mean that you are working in a company only you could have some blogs or you could have some ctf or you could have some research in a security conference you could have any of those if the easiest thing would be writing a blog if you have some if you did some research or if you did some work on that you solved it in ctf so you can write a ctf write up onto that so that's how you prove that your work is there so that's how you should do cyber security in india versus abroad uh, let me see definitely because of the ppps of public uh, purchasing power and whatever the payout is so usually the the salary structure that's in the us or in other company which is economically more advanced than india they pay a huge a huge sum of money and compared to even even here in india they are paying a lot like i've seen company if you want to stay in india you can easily be very comfortable with the money that they are paying a lot of these startups they are paying upwards of 15 lakh so i think that's a good sum of money staying here and like the kind of expenses that you have in india abroad also it's fine but if you if you are willing to settle abroad or if you are willing to work abroad it's fine you can apply for companies there as well you can have the best of both worlds rather if you work as a in a remote or company which is based out of us and you are working in india so basically you are getting the salary of us but you are working here in india so you can find these companies on a lot of websites so yeah that's that uh high start internship something let me post it here I start internship in company and I achieved some hall of fame. But how can prepared for interview for job? Okay, so I talked about this earlier as well. Like what you can do. But one or two tips and some other things. I'm skipping this because I just talked about that. There's a playlist. If you want specific something specific to bug bounty, that would be really good. Can I get a job instead of having non-technical background? So. this is something that i should address because a lot of people they are who are doing bug bounty they are not from very technical or they are not a btech degree kind of people so see it's not that you can you won't be able to get it's just that the way the companies are right now they do some kind of segregation on offering the salary structure to a btech and to a non btech guy so in many cases they have these rules that they need to hire only engineers and engineers means that you are a btech guy so not not every company does that but a lot of company do that so uh, being a bcom you would have to look into companies that are willing to take people like recently i came to know about a person whom facebook hired even though he was a college dropout so he he used to find good bugs in google cloud gcp and he was i think the second person if if you go to the google vrp So he was the second person this year, or second or third in the Google VIP top six people. So he was in the third year of college, and Facebook Facebook already hired him. But that was not in India; that was obviously abroad. But there are companies who might be willing to hire you for that if you have a very good set of technical skills. Even if you don't have a very good tech, uh, set of technical skills, once you have some experience into the field, later on people don't. I don't think they ask a lot about BTEC and BCom, but initially it would be definitely hard for you. uh since so our developer like prom is hiring aspect rather than knowledge on security related concepts so the question is will cyber security jobs really demand a skill set of a developer like programming as a hiring aspect rather than knowledge on security related concepts so uh see having a skill set of a developer is definitely a, a a way better than just being a sec- oh. Did I do something? Okay, just, I'm just zooming in a bit. Oh, one second. Oh yeah, I was there. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, having a skill set of a developer would help you create some tools and do some development work. Also, it would also help you to. understand how the developer mindset works how people create softwares and because to break something it's very very good that you understand how it's first created so for example if you have to uh, bypass a website or if you have to bypass a login check it would be easy to like read about blogs and stuff but it would be 
really good if you understand that how that particular website works. So let's say if you are a Python developer and you know how Flask or Django these things work, how you create websites onto that, and you also know like what are different like nitty gritties of that. So obviously you can read about uh, bugs in these on online forums and online websites. That's that's unsaid. But if you are a developer and if you have that kind of mindset, that would help you create automation tools as well. And that would be adding on top of your skill set that you already have. Because let's say there are 10 people who have the skill set of a security, like pen test or bug bounty hunter. But you also have this skill set of being a developer. So I'm not saying have every skill set that's out there. But if you have, let's say, a Python programming skill set and you also know how to create websites in Django and tools. So you can create beautiful websites on your own, like like we saw Rohit's website here, Security Signs. So he's a security engineer, but this website he has made by himself. So he knows how to create these kinds of things. So I'm not saying that you go on and create zines, but I'm saying that he made this website for himself. He hosted it online for in his own time. So if you have this skill set, it's obviously an added benefit to compared to just being a bug bounty hunter or a security engineer. Certification that Indian recruiters look for. So honestly telling you, if I apply to startups and I've talked to in a lot of startups, none of them ever ask me for any certifications. So, but obviously in companies which are like, uh, which are client-based companies. So I have been, I've been applying to product-based companies. So the difference between those are product-based companies have their own product. Like Gojek has its own app, Grofers had its own app. Whereas client-based companies like TCS, Wipro, all these, so they are facing to some client. So the client could be an Indian client, it could be a US client, it could be a UK client, and they would want the best because they are paying the money for it. And the best is kind of degrees, uh, something that is easy to identify. Okay, this person has completed OSCP, so he must be good in pen testing or he must be good in red team. So that is something that you can understand that, okay, this is how this thing works. So that's why uh, client-based companies, they require certification and Indian recruiters from those companies, they would definitely ask for some certification. They would want to have, they would like do a preferential thing on um, certificate, people who have certificates. Now see this web app security, this is not a question. So what do you mean by this? So please try to ask some better questions because that would help you in, in a way as well. Uh, why did it scroll up? Okay. Is it worth investing for the OSCP certification while you are doing BTEC B? So I already talked about certificates here in the certification that Indian recruiters look for. I know one of my junior who has done an OSCP certification. Probably he's, uh, he's having a decent time finding companies, but like it's not a must. Even if you don't have, it's fine and you can easily be good with it. Right? Even right now, it's been around two years for me, two, two and a half years working as a professional, but I don't have any OSCP certification. and. Even while I was going for this OSCP certification, uh, one of my colleagues who is quite senior to me, he suggested to me a different certification, which was not related to pen testing because he told that that would be more relevant to me as a security engineer. While I was in BTEC, I also knew only OSCP, OSCP certification because that's something that you get to know because pen testing and these things are something that you know easily. But while once you come into like once you come into the companies and once you are into this corporate thing, you understand that there are a lot of these things that's that might be more relevant in as a, as a career and that would help you boost in your career growth. Uh, Shivai, please, uh, I would take your questions. I have already mentioned that after these 38 questions are done, I would just pick questions from the chat. So please hold yourself. Hey, hi, Saurav. Hi. Uh, Android testing. So yeah, I'm making a video series on that as well. You can check it out here. Uh, where is that and mobile app and testing? So, sorry. this is the mobile app and testing. So, probably that's what he meant. So, it's very hard to make out what you mean by Android testing. There's no question around that. Cybersecurity jobs again, that's not a question. And I have I have a playlist on that as well. If you want, you can go into this getting a job into cybersecurity. Oh, is this a private place? But yeah, I mean, this is the video. Then there's a first part of it as well. You can check both of these on my channel here. Uh, these two, getting a job in cybersecurity, plan your career in cybersecurity. So two and three months. So I've not been making any videos on that. I would be making more videos on this. Like I have a guest planned and a lot of you would know him and he is in a very good company right now. So he has a lot of experience 
interviewing candidates and also giving his own interview so i i planning to invite invite people like that and other people who are more relevant into this industry and who have this security engineer and pen testing thing so i am in talks with him uh, like i i have been busy lately i have seen i have not been coming up with many videos right now so now like i am trying to more regularize this so i will be doing that and i will be recording a video with him in september probably first or second week so that's that and then there i have planned videos with other people who are as a what do you say as a cyber security manager or as a security lead in a lot of these indian startups which are paying quite good numbers so if if you would have been here like i'm not sure okay i would come to that later on so i've been posting about these jobs as well on my telegram channel so i'll be talking about that later on and some of these are because of these contacts that i know and i've been working personally with them so that's that how to learn manual testing in web app or bug bounty uh this is uh this is a question that i think i have talked about before as well but let's take it again so i would say start with the sport figure c uh sport figure what sport figure lab and these are very good labs also I, i have my own channel so i would obviously promote that not in a way that okay you can learn here there are playlist around these so this be the hacker series specifically talks about starting from very basic so i have been solving questions on parameter tampering file leaking template injection and all these so these are taken from hack the uh, hack this site there's a website so if you go to these uh, website so i talk so like these videos are in the format that there is a hack this site challenge where i actually solve a lab then i take one of the report re- relevant to that so let's say if i'm talking about template injection so i'd solve a lab on template injection and then i would talk about some of that real bugs that happened into companies so that's how this whole series are so every video has that kind of uh, layout so you can go and check that out also you can practice labs here so there there are a lot of labs a lot of labs on sql injection then there is this cross site scripting and all these you can start learning from here there is this web security academy from them uh, you can there is there are reading material so let's say if you want to read about web cache poisoning or sql injection you can start from that view all the learning materials let's go to this if you are a very beginner you don't have any idea around this so i would say start with owasp top 10 and read about this even before this i would say start with this um, w3 school so this is where i started reading about html css and javascript so do these try to make some very static websites and then move on to actually hacking and doing some kind of stuff so start by creating a project or something like a login page like make a login page or something something like make a so if you let's say if, if you are creating a login page and you are also trying to start using database then you can start looking into sql injection let's say now you want to integrate oauth authentication on your this mini project so now like later on you can start with reading about oauth oauth authentication vulnerabilities and try to test it on your own website that you have created so that is the best way i would say that you can start with it and also go to this website the hackernews.com you can start reading here news about this and try to read and google about things that you don't understand then this is something that i have been focusing and talking a lot about in a lot of my videos that try to google as much as you can try to read as much as you can learn from anywhere that you can learn how to earn consistently in bug bounty i don't know i mean you can find consistently bugs and then you can earn consistently where right to get best and easy tutorial for android app pen test material i would definitely suggest my own tutorial i would definitely suggest my own playlist but the other places you can look for baggy pro reports baggy pro or oh, there's this android i think android and um android bug bounty hacker one i think they have this android bug bounty reports look up i think this is on the activity on this android hacking one this is uh, this this is all Oh, uh, so these are two of the resources and see b3 nak he also has a youtube channel if i remember correctly and he has some very good videos on android so you can check that out as well the reports that he has created a collection of you can look into these some of these could be very high like very high level you might not understand even i don't understand a lot of these 
so that's fine but you can definitely look for all these let me add the link in the chat as well so you can look into these learn from any resource that you think that that is relevant to you i'm not only suggesting that go to my own channel i have already created videos on deepling and android series you can look into that here was that mobile app and testing okay i think i already opened this one here this one so this series is related to android app and testing i have not made a lot of videos i would continue to make more videos on to that i have been a bit outside for some time recently that's why i could make a lot of videos but now it would be more consistent most bug bounty program mentioned about no brute forcing and rate limits how can we use our tools not to violate them so this is something that that's quite interesting and i think i should talk about it uh so see most of the bug bounty programs they have a lot of like a lot of endpoints a lot of urls that you can test so instead of doing brute forcing on one particular uh, website and getting yourself rate limited you can do parallel brute forcing on these so let's say if you have 10 websites and usually each of these websites would have 10 domains or 10 subdomains so what you can do is send one request to each of these and then continue with the second request on each of these so this is something i don't know exactly what this is called but this is something that would help you to like less chance of getting yourself rate limited because after every 10 request you would be coming or hitting this the first website itself moreover the rate limits are usually high but if you are if you are using like 100000 request like that so if you are doing something like that then that would be a really big issue and that would be a really and uh, that would obviously get yourself blocked cyber security jobs i am already talking about it also i have made a series on to that bug bounty please be specific about what you want to ask about bug bounty what is devsecops roadmap to get into it what is gcp security command center i think someone from my team has asked it because gcp security command center is something that I was working upon recently and not a lot of people would be asking about it but anyways so devsecops roadmap is something i think i would take it into maybe a, uh, I, i think i would take it with my guest because he has been into devsecops for like 5 to 7 years now and he would be a more apt person on that but just to give us a small summary around it so like initially once you join into a devsecops or once you are into sec- as a security engineer role so the initial work would be very similar to what you would be doing as a bug bounty hunter or or uh, or bug bounty hunter or as a uh, red teamer or pen tester so that would be something because you are a fresher so you won't have an, a lot of knowledge about devsecops later on your work would be related to uh it would be more related to protecting the company asset and creating automation around it and then you might be exploring some tools or you might be exploring some other vendors as such so like it's it's a whole big thing it's a lot of a lot of these things involved and i think i should be i would be more prepared if i had some time and i would like create a dedicated video or i would take this up with my guest so that would be more apt and just answering something because i have to answer that won't be solving this issue talking about what is gcp security command center so gcp security command center is uh oh pranav you are at intern and runs and he has asked this question okay pranav hi so gcp security command center is is the like if you if your company is on google cloud uh, google cloud project or whatever it is so if you are on google cloud so like we are on google cloud so gcp command center is one one kind of one stop shop for all your security needs on to that so it scans your whole infrastructure to find out like what are what are different resources and whether those are like secure in a manner on the basis of some of the rules that they have so whether they are secure on that manner or not so let's say if i just google this uh gcp security command center so i have been working on this lately and because of some compliance work and all so that there's a blog post that's coming on that so that would i would be posting that very soon security command center security and risk management platform for google cloud game center visibility and control so if you have let's say 1000 projects into your gcp so this would like for example let me give you an uh, uh, one of the findings that it helps you find is that let's say you have 1000 projects and any of those projects have this public 
uh, Google Cloud bucket open to the world. So this um, security command center is the central dashboard where you can see like which of these are public and you can directly click on that and go to that particular resource and close that resource so that you can remediate that finding. So it has a lot of these rules. It has a lot of these benchmarks, so compliance benchmarks like CIS compliance, NIST compliance and all those. So those can also be looked into it and it could you can just like categorize these findings on the basis of that. So let's say if your company is uh, doing a CIS compliance thing and you want to see like what are all the resources in your Google Cloud that is not compliant to CIS benchmarks. So you can just add that CIS filter onto your Google Cloud findings, this GCP security command center, and you can get all the findings related to that. So that's a very 10,000 feet view of that. I have been talking more about this in the blog post that's about to come in some time. It would be going through Gojek's handle. So yeah, I would, I would be sharing it on my Twitter. Um, where is this? Okay, uh, we completed this one now. Let's talk. Aman, I will be taking questions after this, all this 39 questions have been done. So yeah, because they have put in some effort to put it right now. So first I would complete those questions. So initially it was 35 then 37 and some people after I have told them okay, I would be taking the chat question later on, maybe they have added questions to this. So then that's fine, I can take this as well. So I'm kind of confused, shall I do masters in infosec or certifications? I'm already earning good without any certifications and working with startups. So startups in India are paying good roles. Masters in infosec or certifications, I don't know what's your motive behind that. Like what, because see, you all, you already mentioned that you're earning good without any certifications and working in startup. And I, I totally agree with that. A lot of people that I know who are at good positions, even their positions, like they're CISOs, like chief information security officers, and they don't have a lot of these kind of specific certification that you would think that are very relevant right now. And those are CISOs of very big startups, like unicorn startups. So I won't name them, but there are people there. You can easily go and look up uh, them. So it, the certifications are not very relevant. Doing masters is something that if you want to go into more research kind of thing, or if you want to maybe go into teaching or something, then you might want to do masters in infosec. And also then there could be question that do you want to do masters here or you do you want to do masters abroad? So like that would be a very subjective question. You might want to book a Indian blogy session or something like that. So that we can have a, a thorough discussion around that. Um, but Bounty, it's, it may be a, it's maybe a silly question tried to Google many times, but didn't got clear answer. Confused between web application basics related to secure cookie flag, HTTP only and other basic thing when it comes for different programming languages. Any explanation, any explanation or resources to understand the concepts, how these things differ on different programming languages, what are the usage, how to implement them for different programming languages. Okay. That, that's, that's a very well thought of question and very specific to what the person wants to ask, like how, what, and what are different implementations. So this is something you should learn, like how you could ask better questions. And it would be easier for me also to answer these. So see, this person is confused between web application basics related to secure cookie flag, HTTP only, and other basic things. So let's take about the secure cookie flag. So like the question was first is, how these two different or different programming languages? So see these secure, first we need to understand what secure cookie flag is. So I have uh, uh, did a Google search on that. I found that this is the Mozilla link. I would open this link. So I, as a, like I'm putting myself in the shoes of this person. So if I would be this person and if I had to read about this and if I had these questions, how I would go on with that. So I'm just taking that approach and maybe that might help a lot of people. So I just opened the first few links. So these are the three links that I opened. So, OASP is something that I know, okay, that's related to security. So I would go into that. And Mozilla is also, I have something read about it. So I would read these things. So let's say I've read about it and then I'm going to read about OASP. So it mentioned that the secure attribute is an option that can be set by the application server when sending a new cookie to the user within an HTTP response. The purpose of secure attribute is to prevent cookies from being observed by unauthorized party due to transmission of the cookie in clear text. To accomplish this goal, browsers that support the secure attribute will only send cookies with the secure attribute when the request is going to an HTTPS page. And then I would read about this. So 
they have not at all mentioned that it's a very specific to a language it's a basically a header in http response that what they have mentioned sending a new cookie to the user within an http response it's an attribute that is an option that can be set by the application server so application server could be anything like they have mentioned even the code also like something that you ask you what are the users and how to implement so users are understood that the user is so that no one can like the purpose of the security attribute is to prevent cookies from being observed by unauthorized parties due to transmission of the cookie in the clear text and they also mention how this is accomplished so it's accomplished when there is an https page so what are the user it's understood what the user is how this thing differ in different programming languages how to implement them for different programming languages so see they have also mentioned how this is being implemented on java how it's being implemented on topcat how asp.net how you can do this and then php so let's say if you want to implement this on let's say python right so because i am a python person so i just say python secure cookie attribute so so see docs python uh for flask cookies so i just open a few links that's on the top so here you mentioned that set secure cookie attribute for flask cookies so i don't know what flask is so i would just google what flask is but now let's say i know what flask is i googled about it and now i know that okay flask is a web server which is written in python so i am running a flask app using uwsd and nginx i want make it compliant with pci dss running the scan gives server cookie does not contain the secure attribute so the answer is that the secure flag for flask session cookie can be enabled in the flask configuration session i opened it in a new tab uh, session cookie secure equal to true this is something that you need to set to set it for other cookies pass the secure flag to the response that set underscore cookie so response and then app dot make response hello world response dot set underscore cookie so this is so they have given two approaches one is like if you want to set this cookie secure to true for throughout the flask or like throughout all the endpoints that you have on flask like let's say you have an endpoint slash hello then you have an endpoint slash secure you have an endpoint slash insecure so if you want to enable this secure cookie throughout all these endpoints then you would choose this option if you want to just enable on a particular response or particular endpoint you would add this code into that particular function which is responding to a particular endpoint uh this is not here page not found okay i would look into this later on but you get it like uh, this is how you would approach so just googling and i think googling is also an art like you get better at it after doing it a lot of time so see that's how you would go for this same goes for http only cooking http only flag and other basic things so different programming languages implement these construct in a different manner but the base thing is that these are like web technology these are web thing this is not specific to a particular uh, tech stack or particular language or particular web server so it's not specific to that how to approach let me copy this post it here how to approach web application security from a commercial vast perspective when you are not a security professional but a network engineer mm -hmm. okay so if if you are a web application security from a commercial vast perspective and you're not a sec so if you're not a security professional and you want to you i from this question i mean so if you are a network engineer so your work won't involve web application security but you want to learn it so i get it that i get the i get the idea that you want to learn about web application security and how you can approach these commercial vast from that perspective so that would be an approach as a like a bug bounty hunter or as a security professional but your work your primary work is network engineering that's what i understand from this so how to approach so i would say that web actually from a commercial vast perspective when you are not a security professional i'm i'm getting a bit confused but uh or maybe it means that you are a network engineer and you have this web application and you want to secure it using a commercial waf maybe that sort so i would answer both of these so let's say if you are trying to test a commercial waf you could easily start sending some payloads and see what can buy what can those what what are the payloads that would bypass that 
or you can read some previous uh, articles on bypassing let's say a commercial web that's very common is cloudflare or akamai so you can search for that and how to bypass and you can see what other different bypasses that worked previously and maybe you can try to understand that the easiest way would be trying to set up a waf onto your personal application and see what goes through and what gets blocked because that would give you an insight that okay this particular rule got triggered so like i'm talking about specific to cloudflare but it would be the same for any cloudflare any waf vendor so if you have, let's say you have a website and maybe even a static website and you have that set up behind a waf a commercial waf then you can try testing on your own website and then you can see what are different rules or what why that particular uh why that particular payload got blocked so that is one way to test and bypass these waf the other perspective that i think the question means is that ki the person has a website and he would want to use a commercial waf to like to secure his web application so uh, from that perspective if he, if the person is asking so that is something that you can like you can just enable cloudflare waf onto your website and you can see that okay this particular website is secure but understanding what are the limitations and the capabilities of waf is very important because being a security professional you would know that okay these are the limitations but uh, your since your primary role is not that you might want to do some research onto that so you shouldn't have unrealistic expectations ki see if there is some logical bug of if let's say there is idor on to your web application so waf won't be able to block that because that's a functionality from your that's a bug on to your code logic and that's not an issue on to the waf but let's say if uh if the person is trying to do sk injection if the person is trying to run some xss payloads then that would definitely get blocked and that should be blocked by waf if that's not getting blocked then you might want to consider or might want to raise that with the waf vendor that you are using so that is something that i think that's what i under if that's what i understood from the question starting into infosec i talked about it being from india what i advise regarding infosec job shortages the entry level position pay very low and there is gatekeeping how can one break into an infosec career from india if they have the right certs gatekeeping i okay let me was put it here let me call my need to add this other mm -hmm. okay so the question is Oh, I it. Being from India, what are advice reading in, regarding info? So there's definitely info like job the shortages, but there are a lot of places that are vacant. Like if you go to my Telegram, you would see that. Uh, let me just open it here. I think one second. Let me just stop the screen sharing for a while. One second, I was just about to. Yeah, I think I cannot do that. I was trying to show this. Uh, I was trying to show the. Yeah. Okay. Let's. I was trying to show the Telegram channel where I've been posting the um, job job thing and job alert. Like whatever I find or people who ask me, hey, please post it on the Telegram channel. So I do that because a lot of these jobs, like those, are not very visible to candidates or people are not. actually looking into places like startups they they offer quite a good salary so but the thing is that a lot of people they don't get to know about it and by the time they get to know about it it's already like filled so i i would answer these question one by one so infosec job shortages so it's not that infosec job there is a lot of shortage if you have a good skill set that's there is definitely job i understand that there is shortage because uh, if even if you see the reports there is like a uh, 5 lakh or some some number is there and that that many people are required and people are already only hiring for specific criteria that's true i agree with it 
but if you have a very like if you have a decent kind of skill set it's you are not limited to work only in india you can do remote jobs and you got even if you are working in india you could you can have a lot of these companies and startups or pen testing companies where you can apply for initially i don't suggest that you go for these or a specific company but you can apply to any of these companies and like but you have to have some some kind of good skill set to apply for these because there i've seen companies which are looking for months like they have been looking for months to get a good candidate on board but they they couldn't get it so it's not only that there is a job shortage there is definitely a job shortage but there's also a, a lack of skill set like most of these people and which is uh, which is not a which is a kind of sad to say they don't have the actual skill sets to get into like the company that requires that so let's say a company was willing to pay you 18 lakhs per annum for a security job role they would expect some skill sets to have not only some a few bug bounties here and there that's not something that cuts in and if you're very good at bug bounties you would that would definitely add to the benefit but just being like average guy in bug bounty and not having any other skill set that might be hard to justify the pace range that the company is giving you so that's why i say keep develop your skill set into other fields as well try to develop your developer skill set so you can make some tools and you call because as a security engineer role you would also have to work on these kinds of things and developing some tools or some uh, softwares that would help you to understand the mindset of developer and also and to help you to easily identify vulnerabilities because see a lot of times you have to do recon while you are doing bug bounty but if as a security engineer while you are at a company you don't have to do recon because you already know what are different assets you already know what are different endpoints you have the whole source code there you would be doing a white box testing and white box testing means you have the source code and you try to figure out the bugs there so once you have that so you would only be able to understand that if you have that developer skill set and you have you have understanding of code you have developed some applications for your own self then only you would able you would be able to understand this let's say there is this python language python server or maybe the uh, the application is written in python or golang so if you have that skill set you would be easily you would be able to understand that code and find more bugs as compared to any bug bounty hunter or anyone outside because you have access to the whole source code you know how the thing would react to everything you could also have a local setup of that that would add to your benefit not and the bug bounty hunters other people they won't have that benefit there also how can one break into an infosec career from india if they have the right certificates so i've already talked about this in my cyber security uh, playlist that you need to be having the right certificate is fine but also you need to be more visible you need to have some visibility on your part because it's a very small community of people that that are like doing cyber, cyber security thing and that too doing in a good manner so if you have some visibility on your part that would be really good please please check out the cyber security jobs uh, cyber security job playlist i and let me i can uh, like the videos are there i don't have a playlist right now if i would have had that that would be good while i'm interested in getting a job oh, i think this is the one getting a job so there are two videos right now there is only one you can check these two videos that would definitely give you an answer which will be more detailed than the one i answered right now so check these two videos that would definitely help you uh, how to job as a fresh i've answered how to get internship in cyber security you would have to look and you would have to like uh, you would have to do some struggle there because intern getting internship is not a lot of companies are offering internships we had this internship for gojek here for a six month internship around 300 candidates i think applied for that and then we had to choose only two but yeah so i see like interns as a in cyber security is not very much there but yeah there's their security companies like not in product security companies but there's a security company like client based companies they usually hire interns so you can look have a look into that then there is this gurugram uh, cyber police they also hire, hire interns i think that's closed right now but they hire interns every year so you can look into that as well i try to post these links whenever i get it and if you have any of these links please make sure to dm me like if you are uh, working in the company or any place and you find that people are looking for like you are your company is or your organization is looking for a cyber security professional or engineer or even a fresher or intern please 
connect with me or dm me so that i can post that same link on my telegram and i like other people could get benefit of that i have an interview after one week for security engineer can we tell can you tell me what topic question to prepare hey home service please go to this uh, this hey, please schedule a mock interview if that works out for you or you can like go through these so you can go to this and you can schedule a mock interview here it it's not it's not a free session it's a paid session but i would say if you if you are if you want you can go for that otherwise i have already talked about a lot of these and if you check these videos on my channel the cyber security engineer videos these two you will definitely get an idea what are different questions that is usually asked if you want something specific to your resume like what kind of questions that may ask and what kind of like on the basis of the background so these questions vary on the basis of the people's background because let's say if you have a developer back background or something so they might ask some different questions related to that if you want like a resume strengthening kind of thing you can also come to for that in the session so that would definitely help you otherwise obviously obviously i would be making more videos on this channel so you can also look into that how to overcome facing interview fear i i am not very sure about it but you need to give more interviews that's how you you like remove any of the any of your fears that's like that's the sure short way also you get what you if you, you can do one thing like i talk i know a few friends and even i have done that you can do mock interviews within yourself like if you're living with your friends or if you are if you have friends schedule a meet call and like try to do a mock interview as if that was the interviewer and give him a set of questions or any questions that they want to ask because that is something and take it very seriously don't just laugh it off because usually friends that do they do that yeah ha theek hai same like karan and all that so don't do that take it very seriously if you want you can also take it up with your like cousins or sisters or family but the better would be if you would if you take it with your your friends or even if you have some senior whom you can if you are very, like very good connection with them try to do it from their perspective because like ask them ki hey can you be my interviewer for for an hour can you spare for one hour for with me and then do a mock interviews with them that would help you in a very very strong manner so you can do that uh, obviously you can come to engine log and ask make a paid interview for that but i think just removing a fear you need not pay that money for that bug bounty is project pd action suspended i can't get link from the link you gave in github recon video is that so it should be there on my you link then let me oh sorry on my GitHub. Let me just check this. Did it stop? Yeah. Let me. I'm just checking it. One second. Oh, I think so. It's not there. Oh, I think so. It's not there. I would. I would uh, like add it again. I right? maybe one second. Maybe. project discovery they themselves did they remove this i don't think that should be the case yeah pd actions is there on the project is okay i just got to one maybe that's why my even my pd action got removed so this is the project discovery is pd action This repository has been disabled. Access to repository has been disabled by GitHub staff due to violation of GitHub terms. If you are owner of the, so I don't know what happened, but maybe because they were doing it again and again, because they were doing it to scan something, because there was scanner there. So maybe that violated the terms of service. That 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 could be something. I don't know exactly, but because of this also, the all the folks. So even my was a folks. So that would get disabled. I think that's why you can, you are not able to find it there. Okay, let's come back to this. Bug bounty web app security started in for second cyber security. Thank you for asking this, but I didn't get your question. <laughs> I mean, these are just terms, but what is your question? I don't know. Now let's take questions from the chat. I'm just scrolling it a bit up. Uh, Chirag Taneja he asks. No, it's even there's above the questions even before this. Just scrolling a bit so that I can find. One second. So Hari Krishna Rai asks, does parameter policy and system smuggling have any difference? Yeah, that's those are two two totally different things. 
so like in parameter pollution you add the same parameter multiple times to do parameter pollution whereas in http smuggling as i told you that you were just smuggling a request like you were through the tunnel you were trying to smuggle that are you asking about h2c right i think you are asking about that i'm not asking about a general http smuggling let me just show this one and then we have parameter pollution that's what you said there so see in this in this this image is enough to understand that so in the http request smuggling what they have done is they have added to they have added the second request in the same itself and what they have done is using the transfer encoding thing that jobert albama i think that's that's a guy that's the name so he found that a lot of the front end servers they pass it through the back end server and the back end server interprets it as two different requests and it does two different responses to that whereas parameter pollution is just that you uh let's so oh, i think there's this mm. when an application embeds user input in your in an unsafe manner an attacker can use this uh consider your visit by another application reference is should be parameter i think i talked about hpp http parameter pollution that's that's the same what's the mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go to this one. Uh, uh-huh. mm. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. uh um, between multiple instances of parameter with the same name so what you do is uh like let's say you have this parameter user id so you add user id equal to 1 and then you again add user id equal to 2 so what happens in the back end is that they read they if it was a normal request there would be only one user id and that would be something that would be responded back but here in this case they have added two user id parameter with the same name and then it was getting this response the response was taking two replying by two user id so that's what http parameter pollution was and there's this request smuggling is totally different from that so it has basically two it, it's two different requests not only parameter the two different requests are chunked into one and this transfer encoding thing that you see here that's something that segregate from the front end and back end this is due to the misconfiguration between front end and back end the different way they are treating this transfer encoding uh, encoding header whereas in http parameter pollution it's on, it's on to the like logic on to the code of the web application so it has nothing to do with the web servers treating any particular header in a different format rather it's the way that particular web application is treating the uh, request that it's receiving how to target internal assets of companies and better recon approach nobiboy1337 asks this uh internal assets of company usually you do ssrf or the thing i talked about h2c uh, smuggling you can try these this is a very new one and so chances of this getting successful are more better recon approach sorry better recon approach is i mean you can just improve that there there is a lot of content around that you can you can look into subdomain enumeration you can try to find more resources and on that i have a whole like recon video series kind of thing you can check into that like i've got bounty series where i talk about recon you can add more approaches and you can look into recent what are different people looking for but it's usually like hidden trial for one or thing or the other you're trying to find subdomains so you're trying to find endpoints something like that so that's how you just improve your recon try to do github recon that's also works in a lot of these cases try to find more other sources where people are dumping um, credentials or maybe they are dumping some source code like people are trying to find do recon on stack overflow as well they are also doing recon on paste bin and such even i have right and seen people doing i think it was in the video somewhere where people are uh, getting the dump of these tiny or bitly url links and then they are 
checking each of these links for any internal url or a particular subdomain for a particular company so yeah you can look into that as well um, i'm waiting one second Okay, I thought I was reading something. Okay, fine. Let's come to the next question. Hello, sir. I'm complete beginner, basic knowledge network, and no links. I want to know how to start an ethical hacking. Hey, Chirag, I've come to the right channel. <laughs> okay, fine. I have talked about this in my uh, starting hacking. Be the hacker. The first video I have talked about this, and you can. So it's the be the hacker. The first episode is not about my specific channel it's a it's a very generic thing where i talk about how you can start as a hacker like how you can how you can develop onto your own self even if you don't have any youtube channel if even if you're not following any youtube channel how you can just start your journey into ethical hacking so that is something you can look into i've also uh, given the resources into the description you can check that as well then then let's see how to overcome inter so bug test i have also i will already talked about this how to overcome interview fear uh sarav is asking when will the android pen test video come hey sarav i am very sorry about it i it has been quite some time i should have done it before but this week i will be recording another video on android so yeah probably uh by next week or this week itself it would come i have a video on pegasus plan uh, i think you would know about pegasus so yeah that that would come in a day or two or some sometime very soon and then i would be making a video on android pen testing yeah that would definitely come i won't be dropping that series um sarav has another question how to start cloud security sarav uh cloud security if you are specific to aws or gcp uh, gcp has a very high reward thing so let me just see uh like i i have been also starting this gcp uh, cloud security reports let up i've been gcp oh sorry it's it's called gcp vrp i think vulnerability reward program so recently or some google vrp write ups and then there's google vulnerability reward program so here you can read about it what different payouts and all those things then there's this collection of awesome google vrp write ups i have also myself started into looking at gcp for bugs it's a bit harder it's not like the usual bug bounty or web application test that you do because here it's very hard to understand what is the actual impact or is it actually their services that's getting impact or is it my own web server that i am trying to hack so that is something that you need to very clearly define so once you have spent but as goes for any any application so you need to spend some time with gcp you need to spend some time with aws if you are looking into aws security once you are done with it you can then one like you can if you get the idea of you get the hang of the different products because i am telling you you need to spend a lot of time here because gcp has more than 100 services same goes for aws uh, while i started into this i i looked into a few things like uh, let me see if i can show that or not um i think i have this let me stop screen sharing oh um, mm. yeah let me just screen so see this is something that i have been writing my notes upon so this is a uh, notebook called bug bounty here and in the bug bounty i have added this gcp and the process thing so here are the checklist that i have created for myself read about the product offerings read bug bounty reports recreate the bugs most of them wouldn't work because so just check the error message what's the difference i have added these headings and this let's let me just change it to this format so gcp product and services i watched this video so that i how i understand what gcp offerings are bug bounty Setups. Oh, I am not. Am I not sharing the screen? Oh, 
Oh, internet issue. Yes. Oh, even this comment I got. Okay, I think now now is it fine now? Are you able to see? Ravi or anyone else who whom whomsoever are watching this, can you just comment out? I think it should be visible now. Is it visible? Let me know. Okay. Thank you, Shivai. So yeah, I was talking about this question that how to start cloud security. So this is my Joplin. So Joplin is a note taking app. So I have this note here. So this is GCP and so this is my bug bounty notebook. And here under the GCP heading, because I started with this very recently, I added some tax bug bounty cloud Google research. I don't know how long I would be doing this, but whenever whatever time I'm spending on GCP cloud security, I would want to have a notes of these. So even before, like I was doing something, I was usually taking this so like taking notes on the things that I've been practicing. And this is a checklist of things that I have created for myself. So first is read about the product offerings of features so that you understand what are different things that's there. Read bug bounty reports of the product, recreate the bugs. Most of them wouldn't work because they would have already resolved by now. But obviously you can see the what is the error message that's coming right now after these have been resolved. So I have, I have these as headings and then bug bounty reports. I have I added this VR2 thing here, this thing. I've also added some specific write-ups, which I thought was very useful and helpful. And these and these, and then some notes check for Google acquisition. That's something that I would want to look into because Google may be a very battle hardened target, but their acquisitions, recent acquisitions might not be. And also abuse program is something that I would want to look. So these are some of my notes from GCP. This note is not specific to GCP, but I just added it here. Maybe later on I might reorganize it. But like this is the process. This is how I take notes and how I my processes. First, read about it and then recreate the books. Once this checklist is done, I would like deeply go into this hacking. So yeah, that's that's my approach to this. Um, let me come back to this. Uh, first, so. Should we do DSA or till where to learn language for fresher? Which are the important languages for this? Now? So Shiva, you don't need to do DSA. I don't think any of the question companies would be asking you that. Like I've, I've been to myself to a few interviews. I've taken few interviews. My other juniors and my friends, they have taken interviews. None of them were ever asked DSA about for a security engineer role. That's on obviously product security companies, not not client based companies, obviously. So not sorry, not product security company, uh, product companies where you get you are being applying for a security engineer role. So usually startups and these companies they don't ask for DSA. And if like in one case the company was asking me about this data structure and algorithm, and I told them why are you asking this? Because at that time I was in a I had a better option, so I could have asked them. You shouldn't be asking if that's the only case, but I had a few other options, and that's why I told them like as a security engineer role you. I don't think this is very relevant to the work I do. So I told them straight away and they were they were good with it. They told me yeah, we, would, we would change these questions, we would remove that. And then they removed it and then they came back again. In the second round, however, the person who asked, he, he didn't ask me the data structure and algorithm specifically, but he did wanted to look into the approach as to how I solve a particular problem. So that is something that you should work upon. And that, are, that would be, that is a general thing for any interview questions or any interview you are going to face in your life that they would want to look into your skill set and your problem solving skills. So that is something you should work upon. Regarding where to learn a language, it would be good if you're comfortable in a language. See, let's say if I tell you, Ki, hey, uh, Shiva, can you write a, a, a basic code that could just um, find all the mp3 files in my desktop or in a particular folder or uh, find all the .py files or .txt files. So maybe I'm just trying to get the grasp of your language. So you don't need to remember every library and everything you can Google it. Obviously, they would uh, they would give you the chance to Google that that's unsaid. They, they would not expect you to learn all the libraries, but they will definitely like to see how you solve the problem. So one person could solve a problem in a different way, other person could solve a problem in a different way. So they would see how you have efficiently managed this. And this is something you would get a grasp of in the language when you have done a lot of these kind of 
creating tools or creating some solving some problems maybe if even if you want you can do some uh, competitive coding thing that is also good but i don't say that that's required you can do it for your own good for your own happiness but that's not required for fresher which are the important languages for this first interview so there is no specific language that's important or that's not important it would depend on the company and moreover language is not very specific they would be fine like they would just give you a test case and they would expect the answer to be that so they won't be you write only in this language this is the something like the you you need to write in java only or you need to write in golang only you cannot write in python that's not that because as i told you they want to see a problem solving approach and not like whether you have a very strong grasp of knowledge of language you don't you have a very strong knowledge of the libraries that are available you have a very strong sense of the syntax and the like uh, code optimization thing they are not expecting that they are expecting that you are able to solve the problem and also because see libraries and those things that can be looked over on stack overflow and google and like let's say if you are doing a production thing if you are create, creating some tool or script for your company like say you have got the job in the company so they don't expect that you write everything from your mind you would have to google and you have to learn and you have to read on that so that's unsaid that's not expected but they would definitely expect that you comment out your code and you you write code in a manner so that other person can also understand like a lot of people when they start coding they just they name their variable as single letter characters like a b c i j k something like that so that's not how you write production ready code that's not how you write in a company so abstain from that try to have some good coding practices the basic basic hygiene oh it's the same question uh, okay okay uh, which bug should a beginner start with abhishek praveen idr is something that i feel is very basic and even xss i i don't suggest a lot of people would suggest you xss but xss is a lot like it's a lot hit and trial and you it, it's is it's also very basic when you can start if you're good key you are filling all the forms and you're adding payloads in into each each and everything that's also something you can do so idr and xss is something that you can start with but obviously if you are comfortable with let's say if you are comfortable with business logic bugs specific to something or oauth bugs you are very you have a very strong oauth knowledge and strong very grasp on that you can definitely look into that uh manik says i am a big fan thank you manik how can we do brute force on website manik you can there are a lot of tools you can use that and regarding skipping the uh, bypassing the rate limit i have talked about that as well uh bad patel thank you Aman Kumar, how to install GA pattern in GitHub Actions? Live, I have messaged you on some of the problem that I'm facing. Aman, uh, you can install GA patterns the way you would have installed. And so, first try to install it on your part on your machine. Then whatever commands that you run to install it on your machine, add the same commands to your GitHub Actions. So that's how you can do that. Uh, any more questions? Root marks. What is your methodology to find bugs? uh root i have already created a video on that on the recon methodology and how i find bugs you can do that can we learn ccna so ccna is not something that you learn it's a certification can you certification this is a information technology certification block from cisco system ccna certification is an associate level cisco career certification the cisco exams There are some prerequisites. There are no also there are no prerequisites. I mean, you can do CC anyway. I mean, who am I to say you cannot do it? I didn't get your question. What you want? Uh, Manikesh Tech Tube. Manikesh, is there any good career in reverse engineering? Uh, I don't know if you have heard about Pontoon or not. I recently posted a video of this on my Telegram as well. So Ponto is own is a competition where the world's kind of the best hackers, I would say, they come and they hack some of the machines. So they find zero days. They have already found zero days and they try to exploit them live. So finding zero days on these critical machines, like they find zero days on Chrome, they find zero days on Adobe PDF, they find zero days on Tesla even. So. finding these are on apple iphone and all these so finding zero days on these and finding successful so like for example see jack used an integer overflow in safari and an ob write to get kernel level code execution in doing so wins 100000 dollars and 10 master of win points 
so because apple safari was in the browser category and jack dates who was the uh, person from red to systems so he targeted apple safari browser and tried to hack that and hacking this requires a lot of reverse engineering skills and assembly skills and you get very highly paid off i don't know whether indian companies like from my interaction i don't know any company that is paying a lot and who is who are doing very deep research there are few companies like uh, by r2 i know that they are doing some research on that they have people who are doing research on this but there are definitely a lot of companies outside who are doing research even like even if you are not into a company you can do your individual research and go to this pond tone so zero day initiative is a uh, is a is a company that does this they host this pond tone contest throughout the every year i think they host pond tone uh, like for general category for browsers for uh, for browsers for pdf readers for um, tesla and all those then they spawn to on mobile where they do specifically for mobile so you can check out these videos on youtube as well spawn uh, to on so these are very interesting hacks so there's this live stream 9 hour 41 minutes then there's final results and all those so you can check these as well i think yeah one i just got really, very fascinated by this ready these are happening remotely these days so this this guy is trying to bypass this oracle virtual vm box and he's trying to get his hack to run from the guest virtual machine to the host machine and he's trying to execute that so that's what he's doing so you can look into these and reverse engineering is a the learning graph is very steep it's not like a web application testing testing where you already have all everything ready and it's easy to understand it the initial thing is very hard to get into reverse engineering CISA scope. I don't know what CISA is. Let me look what CISA is. Certified Information Security Auditor. So, okay, the scope for uh, this, Aitish Sharma is asking what the scope of CISA. I actually, I don't know about it. I, I would have to look into it. I might, I might read about it. I might talk to some people and then I would, I would be in a more better situation to answer that. I think you could have asked this in the form here itself so that I would be prepared for it. You shouldn't do this. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, Doobie Boy 1337 asks, can you talk a little more this reconnector for Stack Overflow and Bitly? So, so Stack Overflow is a website where you can uh, overflow.com. So where people post questions and you get the answers. Like, for example, uh, let's say not able to load site so, so let's say this is a question right so then there are questions for python and all those kinds so let's say there's this javascript question right so like there are two million questions so a lot of these questions are like questions are being asked by developers so there could be companies there could be developers from specific companies so in in sense of posting these questions what happens sometimes they post some internal code or sometimes they post some internal uh, internal URL or internal subdomain as well. So you can look into that and you can just use a search here. So let's say if I wanted to search for gojek.com or something like that. So maybe you might get some questions where uh, the developer just posted some internal domain or something like that. So that is something you would do. We can find anything, gojek.com tag JavaScript. So you can check for different tags. You can check for advanced search tips. So that is something I talked about. Bitly is a URL shortener. And Bitly, so there's, you can look about uh, all the, you can get a list of URLs, short, shortened URLs, and then you can try to get the actual URLs from that by making a, making a web traverser kind of thing. So it goes to all these URL shortened URL links. And whether some of these links may be that they, they were meant to be shared internally or they may be links to some internal documents. So you might find those and that would be helpful. So I think that answers your question, Nubi Boy. Oh, I think I got a lot of more questions. Sweet Potato ask any resources for JavaScript for exploitation in bug bounties? I, I would say start with this JavaScript. Uh, reports bug bounty that, that is where i would go but obviously you need to have some understanding on to that so there, there are a few so for javascript bug bounty you need to be able to understand the javascript code to understand that you need to have some web developer experience or some javascript experience maybe making a few applications into that would really help 
so either you can go to this w3 schools and go to this learn uh, like it would be javascript as well yeah so you could learn javascript you can also learn other jquery react because react is a popular framework that's being used into a lot of websites and angular js as well so a lot of these websites when you see the code for them like let's say if i show you the code for this sources and then this is so this is asp so asp.net so there could be websites whose code would be written and to understand these codes and the javascript that's there you need to be able to understand the web development and the how this is written and all that so that's why i say have some developer experience that would definitely come in handy and that would be that would put you into the league of better bug bounty hunters compared to most of the people am security and ad recon what's am security I don't know what's AIM security. Oh, Adobe Experience Manager. I think they already have this. Ad Recon, I don't exactly get what you mean by Ad Recon. But see, uh, this is very nice. So once they have this checklist for AIM, so it's for the blue team as well, for, as well for the red team, because this is a kind of a thing that they put that, okay, these are things that could go wrong. So as a developer, as a security engineer, I would try to fix these. And as a hacker, you would try to exploit these. So you can go and look into these. That would really be helpful. I don't know exactly what AEM is, so I cannot expand upon it. But yeah, this is something that I would go if I had a target where it was an AEM. I would also look into reports on AEM. So AEM bug bounty reports and such. And bug bounty reports. And try to change terms, AM hacker approaching. So yeah, see, this is something you got already. Approaching Adobe experience. So I would go through these videos and such. So yeah, like that's how I would approach a target if I find a target which has AEM. Web app assessment checklist. There, there are already a lot of these. I think you can look into it. I don't have a checklist right now handy with me, but checklist. App check monkey is there. There's the sans. You can also check for uh, what is it? Bug. You can add bug bounty to any search you want, and you would get very specific result to that. See, you are already getting very specific results to that. So you can look into any of these checklists. Almost everyone would have something similar. You can make your own checklist from uh, combining or combing through all of these, and maybe publish it on your blog or on your GitHub. You can make a gist, and you can share it on Twitter as well. Tag me, maybe you can also tag me again. I can repost or thank you for that. That would really be helpful for a lot of people. What are the most frequently asked questions? Security engineer job, Aniket code. Yeah, I've talked about it. And yeah, you can just go back to the video and then you can look into that. How many projects a resume should have and can project overcome the lack of internship, etc.? It totally let. Huh. This is something a lot of people fear, and I would say don't ever fear it. So if you go to this resume .html, so you would find I would show what I had in my resume while I applied to Grow First. Let's close this one. So while uh, so you can see I I don't even now I don't have any internship experience. So while I was applying to Grow First, when this was not there, the resume was totally different. Let me just zoom in a bit. I just had these, even like I wasn't passed from my college, so I didn't have this final grade here. I had these two things. I had these things. I had a CTF experience. I had a lot of CTF experience. I found a bug, idle bug in DigiLocker, which was a Government of India initiative, Hall of Fame that was in 2017. I reported bugs to Google Mintra and all these, but obviously there's no link or there's no link or reported link for this because even in Google, I wasn't rewarded because it was a duplicate bug, and that was duplicated by only half an hour or 45 minutes. I got to know because the person who reported, we were talking, and I got to know that he reported it 45 minutes before to me. I was first in terminal tragedy CTF, so I used to play CTF a lot because I didn't know about bug bounties earlier, then the idea of CTF, and then some of them. So I didn't have any internship experience. I had an internship experience, but that was into DevOps, not security experience. But I was very much into so yeah. Uh, so that's that's not something that you should be you should be stopping yourself from applying to companies for internship or security jobs. Uh, Rizwan, I already talked about it. 
but still not install please check your insta team aman uh, i mean you can look into what the error is that would be really helpful and you can debug into it i can help you with that but i mean that's how you solve the issue that's how you solve the problems i would look into the insta team yeah what can I, should a fresher do so see i showed you my project uh, what i did was because i was very interested into uh, botnets and the like the red team not exactly a teaming like the gray hat and black hat kind of thing so i had this particular project so this was this my this was the only project that was relevant to my security experience on my repository on my github at that time while i was applying to groofer so at that time i was a fresher so this was a project and even this project they asked me a few things related to this because this was so see multi threading is a hard concept in python and not a lot of freshers know about it so when they got to know that i have been able to implement threading implementation onto that so they understood that he has some good grasp over the language so every language has something which is hard and which is easy so if you show some actual work onto your github or something they would be very happy to understand and they would also get your viewpoint on this like what are different challenges you faced while you were doing this and how you solved that and all those things so that's very important on any case so uh, you can obviously mm, follow twitter feeds and all that but i am also like there's this app i have been working dot app so this would be live in a month at max by september and i would be making this live so it has this security news it has this bug bounty tips kind of thing it it also has a conference list Uh, I would add this thing. Right now, it has only CTF. So there's if you open the drawer from the side in this app, like this app is not currently on the Play Store. I have removed it from there because there was some work going on. So it would be live in the next month. But you can see everything related to security. I would try to add the security conference thing also. Right now, you can go and check my Telegram. I post these links and whatever security related I find, I post a filtered part of that onto that. Hey, Satvik. Yep, I am good. Thank you for asking. No, you I know there are no training sessions. Those are not going on. I am I am quite busy. I can see that I am not been posting any videos as well. So yeah, there is no training session that's going on. Thank you for asking that. I am trying to make some. I am doing this. Uh, uh, I sh I showed you. I am doing this mentorship sessions. If you want, that's that's only there. Otherwise, there is no other thing that I am doing. I have. I've been approached by a few companies for specific course on bug bounty, but application security. I'm looking into that. If I get time, I would maybe I would make those as well. But right now, there's nothing else apart from that. Ah, uh, Shiva, asked, how many languages did you know? I knew Python. Python is something that I have been very fond of, and that's something that I only knew. C, C plus plus I knew, but I wouldn't have been able to write any code into that if C C plus plus was in my like, course curriculum while I was in college. But that is something that I wasn't like I wasn't in touch with. HTML, CSS, JavaScript is something that I learned because I wanted to make a few websites and all those things. So that's something that I learned. But I don't consider that as a language because that's not something as a security engineer you would be expected to know. You would be expected to understand the code, but Python is the only language that I got to know. That's for sure. you won't be asked for dsa if the company is asking for dsa i don't think they are very specific to uh getting a security engineer rather they are more into competitive coding they might not be expected though. there could be cases where the company is the person interviewing is not of a security background so in that case they might ask so just to be like just to crack those interviews you might want to have some idea but if they ask you they, you can say that i'm more into security so i am not very much into dsa but as a fresher i think people ask the, the person who was interviewing me as a fresher he was a like very good guy in security so he didn't do that but maybe you might have some experience you might get to experience that so it's better to like not miss that chance because you didn't know some dsa so have some basic knowledge and tell the person who is interviewing ki i am applying for security engineer job i am not as a developer so i don't think i would and i'm not very in much into this dsa thing so that that is something they would understand admin pon and this is a very generic question over oh is there any scope in india for car hackers iot pending 
IoT pen testing. I know a few companies who are doing IoT pen testing. So those are usually uh, US based companies. They have these IoT devices. Their head office is in India, so that's why they are working on it. So if if like there was a vacancy recently in th- that company as well, but that was not for a fresher. So yeah, there are companies who are who do IoT pen testing. You can easily search upon it. Car hackers have not seen much. Uh, you can look into it, but I have not seen much into that. Is Bash considered a good language of the second age? Yeah. Bash is not actually a language. Um, let me show you what Bash is. Bash is a software. Shell scripting is a language. That is something you might want. Uh, yeah, sweet potato. Uh, good language of so yeah. So see, apart from Python, oh, also Shiva, you asked me that what language is new. I also new shell scripting because I was practicing some things on this over the wire. This is a good resource. And then there's this Linux journey. So I would definitely say that have Linux experience on to you because that would that is very critical if you are going to apply for any job. And more away in a cybersecurity role. So this war games is bandits is something which would teach you about this Linux thing. So that is something you should understand. And Linux foo, this is also a good website where you can learn about Linux. So yeah, coming back to the question. Yes, uh, for security jobs, or you would definitely be expected to have some shell, shell scripting. People might expect you to write some basic shell scripting or understand shell scripting because a lot of times writing a Python code would be more tedious than just a sed command. So a sed is a, a bash command or a shell command that is in, available in most of the Linux. So that is something. After you have some basic knowledge about shell scripting, how to uh, do some automation around it using shell scripting, you can try to write. POSIX scripts. POSIX scripts are basically compliant on any of the Linux terminals. So try to advance yourself onto that. Good boy, do one video on wireless pen testing. I think I might be doing it. I was very much into wireless pen testing while I was in college. At that time, WEP was a bit prevalent. You could find those WEP and you can crack those. Even I cracked one of these in my in my home place where I used to live in Patna. And there was a WEP Wi-Fi near where that signal was coming. I had to go onto my rooftop. From there, I could get a good signal. And then I tried to crack that. And eventually, I got the password. So that was very interesting. But these days, most of these are WPA. And WPA is not easy to crack. It's usually brute forcing that something. I might make a video on that because I think that's something that a lot of people would be interested in. Yeah. Shell scripting is a generic term. Bash scripting, bash is software. So it's like, um, it's like, um, so web development is something that you learn. Learning Flask or learning Golang is uh, learning Mux or learning Revel is a framework. So Flask is a Python framework, Revel is a, uh, is a Golang framework. So, but shell scripting is something that you learn. Whether you learn it in the form of bash scripting or whatever, that's, that's the basic thing. You just need to learn shell scripting. That's all. I've already mentioned about these two websites. Over the wire, let me add it here in the comment. And then there's this Linux journey. So you can have a look into both of these. After one episode, because I've met me, who are good at web development, didn't know much. Yep, even so, I'm, I'm also not very much into network security. I used to do network security while I was in college because I didn't know about app security much. So I was into this networking team uh, because I was interested in it. So I used to do LAN sniffing, Ettercap, and all those. I, I don't know much about active directory enumeration, but I get the concept of it. So if you ask me, I can do that because even here in red teaming activity while I was doing at Gojek, I had to do some of these kinds of things. So yeah, do it differ like, I'm more into an AppSec guy, not much into net security, but yeah, I definitely do that. Offensive OSN. I might do this while I will. So I would be doing a video on GitHub Recon. Uh, yeah, GitHub Recon. So I've already like written it down. I might make a short video on that. That's not a way. I would add some automation and payload and scripting on GitHub Recon. So I would do that so that people get to know how usually people do that. There's a very good video about it on on Farah's channel, I think, about uh, from the gentleman or like the gentleman videos. He had about this and also on. Uh, the gentleman I think it's also on yeah 
Bakrad University. It's also somewhere else. I've seen this video other places. Yeah, this one, Namsek channel. So on Namsek and Farah also did an interview on this. So yeah, I think there also it talks about this GitHub account and he is a, he has a very good knowledge Hello, about guys. it. Welcome to Bakrad. So you can check this Bakrad video as well and you can check his Namcon's video also. So yeah, that's that. Uh, uh, guys, I would be closing this session in the next five minutes. By one one ten, I would be closing it. So if you have any questions, please share. I'll be taking questions by one five one six. Whatever question that get completed by one ten, you can DM me or Twitter on Twitter as well. And yeah, I could take it later. But yeah, I think it's already two hours more than two hours right now. Pushkar Nandwalkar asks, Are we on upper hand if we do OSCP in a B B Tech? I mean, having certifications or having anything more than just B or B Tech degree is definitely good. But I won't say that it would be an upper hand or something. But if you go to a company which is a client based company, definitely you have an upper hand because client based companies, they need to show that the, the consultants that they have, they have this OSCP or other certifications. So definitely would have an upper hand on that. And even like if say two candidates who have every sales set as the same as you, then obviously you would be more preferred because you already have this thing. And also soft skills also matter. So look into that as well. That would definitely help you. Cool. I think that's all the questions. If you like it, please make sure to like the channel, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share with it. I have a goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Let's see how that comes up. Oh, I, we have a few questions. Uh, if you are tight on budget, I, I, I would definitely not go to go for OSCP or any, any certifications. Um, like I myself didn't go for a certification because I didn't consider like paying 70, 80 K for that. That's a huge sum of money for me. So I wouldn't definitely say even till now I have not gone. And, while you go to a company, the company would definitely pay for OSCP if you are if you are willing to go for that. So why to spend for that if you can get it while you're working as a professional? Uh, Nitesh Kumar, Nitesh Kumawat comes. He has asked a question. I'm doing bug bounty from seven, eight months and I am having good knowledge on core bugs. But I always read up, uh, but I don't focus. See, Nitesh, reading everything and if I'm not practicing, it won't do any good to you. Because just reading cannot solve, unless you practice it, you cannot, you cannot actually see what the issue is and whether something works or not. Reading is fine. Reading is a passive skill and that's all that's definitely required. But to sharpen your skills, to actually test what you have learned, you need to practice it online. Whether you start with Portsugar lab or you do it on the real website, which has a bug bounty program, that's up to you, but you need to practice it somewhere. Uh... How to consistent? So see, to practice consistency is it's all it's all your mind game. It's a mind game. You you may get like burned down. You may get like I'm done with it. You may feel like that, but that is something that you have to show up again and again every day. You need to don't do something that you get totally burned or burn out, and then you are not able to do anything. Do it in a limit, and someday if you are very enjoying it, something do it that day for long hours, but Try to make try to make a routine or try to make a habit of it. Like, okay, see, like let's say you are you have your classes or something, or you have your job or something. So make a routine that okay, half an hour I would spend every day just at looking the applications. Many a day, even I don't do that. But I try to make a I try to stick to a routine that half an hour I'd be spending on this because half an hour every day would add up to three or three and a half hours a week. But if you just like you just procrastinate on that, that won't, the, after a week, you won't have that three or three and a half hours under your bed. So that's something that you need to focus on things like anything that you want to be good at it, you need to focus, you need to work on that. So that's something you, you have to develop. If, if you're facing difficulty, try to, if you're facing burnout on websites or doing bug bounties and you're not getting any bugs, I can totally understand that. Try to change your approach, try to do some CTFs. Try to do some CTFs, try to hack on some maybe VRPs or try to hack, try to secure some government websites or try to find something else. Because once you get the taste of success, you would 
B, you would have some adrenaline rush, which would be very hard to dampen by any other unsuccessful attempts. So that's how you can do that. Yep, I would continue to make videos on Android. Definitely, I have a video planned this weekend. Uh, this week, I would do that, and I would try to post it by the weekend. Putting our track me profile rank or hack the box profile makes a difference on the resume. So yeah, Nikit, that definitely does work out, and that also. So the HR might not understand much in, in most of the cases, but I've seen that even that perspective is being changed. A lot of people, a lot of HR, they are also, even if they don't understand what this rank is, they would ask the security engineer who is already working in the company, ki, hey, this profile is there. Or usually they just forward the profile to the engineers to shortlist or something. So if they see that, okay, he's a very good at uh, try at me or at the box, they would definitely work. And adding these, so add your highlights or achievements on top of your resume, and that's something because no one wants to read like three or four pages of resume. It would be good if you just have a one or two page resume. Even better if you also have a web version of it because not a lot of person want to download something on their mobile and just they would just would try to get it, see it on the web and then they would be fine with it. Like the way I have it on my website. Uh, how to get a referral? You would need to ask people who are working at that company on LinkedIn or somewhere else. Try to connect with security engineers and people. And once they post about say internships for their companies, you would get like Rohit who who came as a guest today on today's live stream. He posted about this. I I retweeted. I reposted about it on my LinkedIn while we were having open roles for internship on Gojek. So you can just be connected with people you you think that these companies would have. They have security engineer and try to build some like relation with them. A good relation, a healthy relation that would work out in great ways. I've seen. Thanks for thank you, friend of thank you for the compliment. That really means a lot. Uh, I don't have any tips or requests modeling right now. That's it. Thank you guys for coming. I would just close this session now. Make sure to learn a lot, spend your time reading stuff, reading good stuff, share it with me or share it with other people. If you're working in our organization, thank you. Thank you. If you're working in our organization, if you have any internship or cybersecurity roles. Please try to forward it to me. I would try to post it on my Telegram channel. That would definitely help a lot of people seeking these. There are already a thousand or more than thousand people, and a lot of them are looking for cybersecurity jobs and roles. So yeah, look into the channel, search for hashtag job alert, and you would find like how the way I post it on my channel. I add a tag hashtag job alert so that if later on someone wants to search for these jobs, they can easily do that. Mahesh, uh, Mahesh asks, this is the last question I'm taking, guys. Nothing, no more than this. Uh, Mahesh applied for a product security internship, but unfortunately not got selected. Uh, what tips you want? Not getting selected. <laughs> so Mahesh, we had a lot of candidates, and we had this uh, CTF for that. So there were around like 300 to 400 people who applied for that internship. And we came, we made a hacker rank, I think, probably hacker rank quiz. Uh, I'm not hacker rank test where we had the CTF running and people who solved the CTF. And then we shortlisted and we interviewed each of these candidates. And we found we like we got two people home from there. So yeah, if you think you didn't fare well in a particular stick, or let's say if you if you weren't able to solve that Android challenge on the CTF. So you have that APK, try to look into it. Try to if you if you think that you you couldn't solve that, you could ping me up, you can ask me how that could have been solved. I would definitely be ready to help you on that. Thank you guys. It was a nice session. Hope everyone is happy and fine. Yep. Have a nice day. Bye.